Imagine yourself traveling through a deep, dark forest where it is very humid, it's very sticky, and there's a very low visibility. And you and your fellow hunters have heard that there has been some tiger lingering around here. And when you imagine that, how do you feel? And what is the thing that's going through your mind? So in all those years studying psychology, reading different journals and reading different books, I could not get one idea straight, which is why the stress or the experience of stress is related to our immune system. Why chronic stress reduces our immunological functioning. What is the mechanism behind it and why we have, we have this? And until I read this paper, uh, The Evolutionary Significance of Depression, that I started to see the mechanism behind it and I started to connect everything together. So in the example of the tiger in the forest, a potential tiger in the forest, if we truly encountered the tiger and uh, we become physical, like we come into the fight with the tiger, then we are much more likely to get hurt or injured or wounded by the tiger and as it is a physical fight. In this case, our chances of getting infected or exposure to different pathogens is drastically increased. And before we have, say, more the medicine or we developed the penicillin, uh, the only thing we have to fight against the infection of different pathogens is our innate immune system. And uh, yeah, as we can see in history, if a person get a severely wounded, say a fan or the claw open up my, uh, my arm or my chest or whatever, I am very likely to get infected and die from this. So in this case, as it is stated in the paper, the stress perception will activate our immune system in preparation for situations where we are or we have a much higher chances of getting injured or infected. And we gradually evolved this mechanism to enhance our chances of survival. And essentially this is to heating up the engine in preparation for some dangerous situations. If nothing happens, then fine. So in this example, if we walk through the forest when we feel safe, then automatically this bodily response will subside. But if we truly encountered the tiger and we truly started to fight it, in this case, if I have a already prepared immune system, then if I get injured, I can respond to different infections and pathogens or different bacteria much, much better. And in this case, I have a much better survival chance than people who did not prepare themselves or did not prepare their immune system for such injuries. However, if we're constantly stressed and we're constantly perceiving dangers around us, then we will have our body and immune system constantly on guard. And over time, inevitably, this is gonna burn out our immune system just like any other part of the body and then our immunological functioning will be lowered. And in mammalian or human evolution, we can see that the majority of the physical contact, the physical injury is very much related to survival chances. For instance, hunting, right? We'll hunt certain animals back then or say surviving the, the attack of a tiger or the warfares between tribes or it's the competition of mate or within the peers when we compete for the reproductive success. All those different situations involve potential physical harm. And the very interesting thing here is that as we can see in this theory and many other schools of psychology have theorized, is that the perception of risks, the perception of danger is purely subjective. 
So let's move back to the to the examples of a tiger in the forest. So in this case, um, it doesn't really matter if we know for sure the tiger is there, right? We don't need a solid evidence to know that the tiger is there in order to feel stress and in order to activate our immune system. Because even if there's a very slim chance that I might get attacked, then it is worth it to have my body, have my immune system prepared than not. Because even if there's a, say, um, one percent of chance, but it really happened and I am not prepared, then of course I have a much higher chance to be eaten or get injured and eventually die. So in this case, even if there is a slim chance that the tiger is there, it is worth it to have our body prepare. And I believe this is the evolutionary uh, foundation for the development of anxiety and the perception of risks. On the country, the fear and the anger, I would say, are always uh, reality-based or objective-based. Uh, so if there is a bear, a grizzly bear or a silverback gorilla standing in front of me, I should feel the fear. I should feel probably freeze or run away because the danger, the threat is right there in front of me. And when we see the physiological reaction of anxiety, well, what are they? So we get uh, increased heart rate, you start boom, 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 as well as hyperventilating. And also the blood sugar would start to rush into our muscles. All those reactions, the pumping heart is to get the blood to the muscle, hyperventilating, we're getting trying to get more oxygen into the body, into the blood, and the release of blood sugar, they are all reactions preparing us to fight or to run away if the potential danger actually showed up. So how do social and uh, emotional stressors fit into the picture? And when we think of it evolutionarily, I think it makes sense to say that everything which reduces our chances of survival is essentially a stressor. So a physical attack is certainly reducing my chances of survival. Either it's a slap or it's tiger's call, right? My chances of survival is greatly reduced. However, socially, say if I am rejected by a, by a woman, then my chances of survival is also greatly reduced. Essentially, being rejected by a woman is the same as someone chop off my arm, for instance. Instead of directly inflicting physical damage or physical pain to my body and to my existence, which is the adding negatives, the social rejection will cause me to miss the opportunity to mate and potentially reproduce with this woman, which lower my chances of survival as well, because it lowers the spread of my gene, which is a reduction of something positive. So adding negative and reducing positive, they are the same. And I believe that this can be at least one of the reasons to explain why uh, the emotional pain and physical pain share the same pathway they register the same in our brain. No matter if it's physical pain or emotional pain, they all lower our chances of survival. For instance, uh, public humiliation. We do not like to be humiliated in front of other people because that influences how other people think of us and that influences our status in the group. So our status in the group as well as how other people perceive me is crucially 
important for my reproductive success and my chances of survival as well. So if everybody in my tribe thinks that I'm a piece of shit, nobody would like to go hunt with me. I will have no friends. And nobody would like to marry their daughter to me. And I believe as we are social animal, throughout evolution, we have those hardwired uh, mechanisms rooted in our mind. So that is all for today's video. I hope this information helped you to understand our stress response better and understand yourself a little bit better as well. And if you found this video to be interesting, please do not hesitate to subscribe, share and comment down below. I hope you liked it and I will see you in my next video.